What is going on everybody? Today I wanted to talk to you about charging your Tesla Model 3, S, X, whatever, any electric car really that you have, charging that with solar panels. And you can charge your car completely for free after accounting for the cost of the solar panels, of course. I've heard some people talking about solar not being very powerful, not generating a lot of energy. Uh, and of course these electric vehicles take a lot of power and people thinking that solar can't charge them um, Well, that is not true at all. So I have a really nice sunny day here I figure we can check this out see that I can charge my car completely on solar with nothing else It's plugged in right now. It is not charging if you're interested in solar for yourself Check out the description of the video this video is sponsored by drone quote They can get quotes from anybody in your local area completely for free compare everybody and they can get you the best price I also have a referral for Tesla if you're gonna go through them and if you're in Michigan actually neither of them install in Michigan um, so I have a referral for Michiganders specifically as well down there so if you're interested in the specs of my solar I have a video on that I will link that above but today I just want to show you charging my Tesla with my solar so right now let's see how much energy my solar system is producing it's currently 11 45 a.m. so the middle of the day perfect to get a lot of Sun the Sun is no longer directly above us it's actually moved a little bit towards the west at this point and if we look in the app, you can see right now we're generating 10.6 kilowatts of energy. So this is the Solar Edge app. Looking at this graph, we can tell it's not a cloudy day. It's perfectly linear. It goes straight up. We're kind of at the peak of the day right now, and it should hang out around this energy production for a while. Uh, we've already made 22.7 kilowatt hours of energy today. Again, it's not even noon yet. If we look at something like yesterday, it was a cloudy, rainy day we still produced uh, almost 12 kilowatt hours of energy, which is really good, but you can see how spiky and jagged it is. If we go back one more day, you can see here there's kind of big dips and it's really jagged. That's as clouds pass over. The energy production goes down a bit, but if we click on here and kind of expand it, even when you look at these dips, you can see you're still generating five kilowatts is a lot. That's more than enough to power our electric dryer. Um, so even on a kind of a cloudy day, when a cloud passes over, if we're drying clothes, it's still fully covered. So going back to today, right now, 10.6 kilowatts. This graphic we're looking at now updates every 10 or 15 minutes or so, but I do have an app for my energy company that we're looking at now, and it is live by the second. I think this updates every one second or two seconds or something like that. And you can see right now we're generating over 10 kilowatts of energy. That negative means the energy is leaving my house. It's going out to the grid. And we'll talk about why that's important in a minute, because you're probably thinking, uh, yeah, it's nice and sunny, but I'm not always home during the day when the sun's up to charge my car. Uh, so we will get into that. But right now we're producing about 10 kilowatts. The car is not charging. Depending on what car you have and the charger you're using, um, you can use 7 kilowatts or more to charge your car. I'm using the NEMA 1450, so that's the biggest wall adapter you can use for the Tesla at home. Uh, the Tesla wall charger will use a bit more than this, um, but that's what we have today. So I'm going to switch to my Tesla app, and we can start charging the car. So right now it's not charging. I'm just going to click Start Charging. And then we're going to quickly switch over back to our live monitoring app. And you'll see still negative 10 kilowatts. It takes the car just a second to start charging. And it slowly will ramp that charging up. And you will see this number get higher. So there we go, negative 8 kilowatts, negative 6. And again, charging the Tesla with the wall connector uses around 7 kilowatts. I think it's 7.2 or something like that. So we should see this around uh, negative 2 or negative 3. Uh, there are some other things going on in the house as well. So pretty good, it should be settling right around here. So negative 2.5 kilowatts still, while my car is charging at the fastest speed I have available at home. Um, so if we switch back here to the Tesla app, we can see I'm getting 28 miles an hour, 232 volts, 32 amps. So the solar energy uh, going into these panels, I have some on the other side of the house as well. Um, the solar energy going into those panels is now feeding directly into my car. And you can see we're still overproducing here. So we're still negative 2.7 kilowatts. That is a lot of power. So I do have a really big system. It's a 14 kilowatt system with an 11 kilowatt inverter. Again, all the details are in that other video. But our house is fully electric. We don't have any natural gas here. We don't have propane or anything like that. So our dryer, our stove, everything is electric. Um, and so solar was kind of a really good bang for the buck for us. It doesn't work for everybody, but for most people, eventually you do end up making some money with it. So we can keep watching how this is progressing, but a lot of people are gonna say, well, hold on, I'm at work during the day, and normally I am too, of course. Uh, so I can't charge <laughs> my car with solar, I drive my car to work. Well, this is where something called net metering comes in, where this negative 2.3 kilowatts we're looking at right now is leaving the house, and it's going out to the grid, 
and my meter is set up so it knows when energy is coming into the house or leaving the house. And my energy company actually pays me for that energy that I produce that I don't use that I send out. So we get credited for that energy and we get those credits on our bill. So at nighttime, of course, when the sun's not out or if I need to charge my car on a rainy day or a cloudy day or if I have to charge my car at night, those credits are on my bill, I can use those credits then to pull electricity from the grid, and that way that electricity is still free for me or nearly free. The net metering in Michigan isn't as good as it used to be, so you do pay a little bit more than what they pay you for the electricity, but it still works out where our electric bill should be anywhere from five to $15 a month. So because of that, if I'm home with the sun, uh, I do like to charge my car uh, while I can while the sun's up. Uh, but you know, it's not something I stress over. If I need to charge it at night, I just charge it. I don't really think about it. But maybe if I come home on a Friday, you know, I get home at five or six, the sun is still out, of course. We still, during the summer, we still are producing around that time, I'm not sure, three to five kilowatts, something like that. Um, I'll just usually not charge my car and I'll charge it on Saturday or Sunday when I'm home the sun's out and we have kind of the full power from the solar system or at least more power so going back to the solar monitoring app you can see updated 1148 so that's four minutes ago uh, we're currently producing 10.7 kilowatts that's about our peak our max is about 11 kilowatts uh, due to our inverter it won't get much more than that and there are inefficiencies you'll get um, from the panels being really hot or of course like i said clouds uh, degradation over time but that's all factored in when you get your quote um, your solar company should factor all those things in to show you how much you'll save over the warranty period, which should be 25 years. You can also see in our monitoring app, uh, today it says pending. That's because overall we're net negative and this app isn't set up to show you negatives. Um, so any day you see pending, it means we were negative energy for that day. If we go back to yesterday, when it was rainy and cloudy, we used 6.5 kilowatt hours, which amounts to, for our rates, somewhere around 60 cents is what we would pay. Um, of course, that's not counting what's covered by the solar we've stored up, so it'll be even less than that that we'll owe for that day. And you can see this huge spike up here. Uh, I was charging my car for a bit while I was home, and there was pretty much no energy being produced. And again, if we go back, you can see these days are missing, missing because we overproduced. We made more than we used, so it's a negative number. And then if you go before that, this is before we had our solar turned on. We've had our solar for a while installed on the house, but we just got our meter updated so it would read back and forth. So now we can just leave the solar on all the time. Before, we were trying to use it to charge the car and, and use the dryer and stuff, um, but now we just leave it on, and you can see most days are gonna be pretty much negative. So I hope that answers that question for you. Um, I was pretty excited to get solar. Um, it's nice when you use a lot of electricity. It makes buying the panels a much easier financial decision. Of course, it's still a big amount of money up front, but the tax credit that we still have this year and next year helps a lot. So solar is an investment like anything else you're paying now to save eventually. But in our situation, we got a loan, we didn't pay cash, and the loan payment amount that we have is about the same as our electric bill was before we had the solar. So some months in the summer, the loan payment will actually be a little more expensive than what we were paying, uh, but for most of the winter, the loan payment is slightly less than what our electric bill was over the winter. And if we re-amortize and we pay some of our tax credit onto that loan, it'll be far cheaper to pay that loan than any electric bill we had throughout the year. If you have any more questions about solar, please feel free to ask in the comments down below. I look forward to talking to you down there. Uh, so far, I'm loving the system. I'll be doing updates at one month, six months, a year, all that stuff to let you know positives and negatives. Um, there have been a couple negatives, but it mostly was due to the install and the electric company um, kind of sucks, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, but anyway, uh, I look forward to talking to you down in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this video and you will see me next time. <music>